it's another day the lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it welcome to another series of our moments with god in this month of september we started the series on the shunamite woman and last week we will talk about the the trace of the people who are from shunem and today we are going to be looking at two features of the shunamite woman we're going to be looking at two today and we're still going to be dwelling on our text from the bible in the book of second kings chapter four and today i'm going to read verse nine Again, Second Kings chapter four verse nine. Listen, and it says, it says she said to her husband, "I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God." Verse ten says, "Let let's make a small room on the roof and put it in it a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp for him that he can stay here whenever he comes to us." So. We are seeing from this um, scripture, verse 9, that she acknowledges that he is a holy man of God. So the first feature we are going to be looking at today says that she is discerning. She has a spirit of discernment. Apart from the fact that we talked about it last week, that she had the, the traits of those from Shunem, and because the Bible says that the sons of Issachar understood times and season, and we said that Shunem is a tribe in Issachar, she also has a spirit of discerning. She was able to discern that he is a holy man of God. And the Bible says that we should be able to test our spirits. In the Bible, the Bible says in the book of First John chapter 4 verse 1 that we should test all spirits. You need to test all spirits to know if this is the spirit of God that is speaking or if it's not. And that is why if you have the spirit of God in you and you have you, you've sharpened yourself, you sharpened your ears, your ears, you have sharpened your spirit to um always align with the spirit of God. When you see something that is trying to portray the spirit of God and that is not, you would always know. By the help of the God we serve. And she had the spirit of discernment. She could tell that Elisha, this man of God that's always passing here, that he's a man of God indeed, that he's holy. He's not like the rest of the prophets. And don't you think that in those days there were no there were no false prophets? Yes, they were. They were. But she had the spirit of discernment, so she could discern that he is a holy man of God, that he is who he says he is, that he actually stands for God. And she was able to discern that in the in the Bible, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 10, it talks about um, 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 the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, where it says we have um, the message of the, the wisdom, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and it says discerning of spirit. That is a spirit that we should covet. That is a spirit uh, that you should desire to have. You, if you have the spirit of discernment, it, it, will be, it, will be, it will be easy for you in this world that we are in today. It will be easy for you. So she had the spirit of discernment that she could come to her husband and she could tell her husband, uh, this man, I know he's a holy man. I know that he is for God. I can see something in him. There is something that agrees um, to my spirit. Whenever I see him, that I know that he is what he says. That I know that what he says is actually for God. And you know, sometimes you could say, um, "Okay, let me let me switch to the to the spirit mode, so I can know so I can know what God is saying." But but there is a mood mode you you always have to be as a child of God. You are supposed to be aligned all the time you're supposed to be in in christ all the time you're supposed to be fine-tuned to the holy spirit at all times that whenever you're walking whenever you're awake whenever you're sleeping everything about you your spiritual antenna is always on so that every decision you have to make at every point in time you do it with the spirit of god alive in you being able to discern you don't have to press an on button to come on spiritually no you have to come to a point where you are no more a babe in christ that every time and for every decision that you have to make you are always aligned you are always on you are always attentive spiritually this is the this is the point where god wants us to come to that we become no more babies in christ but that we are always aligned to hearing from him to knowing when he's speaking that even when when you're walking on the road you just see something and you know that oh this is it and this is not it always aligned constant alignment shabbat and the second point we are going to um, pick on today, apart from the fact that she is a discerning woman, she discerns spirit, is that she is a virtuous woman. So when we say virtuous, what do we mean? Well, we, we, in this context, we say virtuous is um, she's a woman of integrity, she is disciplined, and she makes her husband a better person. She is a virtuous woman. So the Bible records in verse 9 that she pointed out to her husband that let us make for him. She 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 consults her husband before making the decision. She refuses to do anything 
without her husband's approval because she she has a head now she's married and then every decision she, decision she has to make has to be approved by her husband so she doesn't just go about and say i'm a holy woman of god come on i'm a child of god and i can make any decision i want no she respects her head she ex respects the authority over her so she she knows that and we, we need to do something for this man of God. Her husband will probably be busy. I may not, may not even think of that kind of thing. But she decides, she knows it. And then she draws her husband's attention to it. And she said, you know what? I found something. And I think that we should do this for this man of God. And husband is like, okay, since you said it, then let's go with it. She didn't just say, I, I'm, I'm, I created a room for someone. Or the husband didn't just come home one, one day and he's like, What's happening? I, I, I created a room for someone because um, he's a holy man of God. So I think we should accommodate him. It wasn't like that. The Bible says she informed her husband. She told her husband, I sense that this man is a holy man of God. Come on, let us. Let us create for him. So there is this unison that she brings to her home, this integrity, this discipline, this trust that she gives her husband about her, that, that everything that she has to do, she, she has to get the approval of her husband, who is the head over her, as Christ is the head over the church. So she, she consults her husband, and her husband gives a go ahead. So she understands the place of the authority over her head, the authority over her, and the approval that he has to give, the consent he has to give whenever she has to make any decision as a woman. And now, if we if we will compare this to the story of um, Abigail and Nabal to King David in the Bible, in the book of First Samuel chapter twenty-five, the Bible says that um, David sent his men to the house of Nabal, who was a very wealthy man, because he was on the run and he needed he needed to eat, he needed provisions for him and his men. And when his servants got to where Nabal was, the Bible says that Nabal was a very arrogant man. He didn't he he he, he was full of himself and he didn't have respect for. David and he responded in a very harsh way and he said who is David and who is the, who is the son of Jesse he didn't care and because of that come on David was a man of the sword David was ready to slay every man in his household but because the servants of neighbor they knew the kind of wife that he had they knew Abigail was a woman of the spirit they knew that she was she was a virtuous woman and a woman of integrity and discipline they one of the servants went to meet her and said see what just happened see what your husband has done and if you don't act right now we are all going to be dead and she got up she knew what to do she was a wise woman the bible records that she didn't tell her husband when she was going to meet the king she took things she took bread and other substance and went sent servants ahead of her and then she went to meet the king and she 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 pleaded on behalf of her husband and of the entire house so she said my husband his name is foolish he's acting in his name as a fool that he is have mercy on him and have mercy on your servants have mercy on us and please take this and she did it and david calmed down and he took it and he left and that was says when she returned she found her husband drunk he was in high spirits and the bible says she didn't say anything to him about what she did that records that the next morning while the husband was now sober she now spoke to the husband and said what she did yesterday what he did and then what she did the bible says that when he heard it he, he had a, a heart attack. He, his heart got stuck. And a, a, after about 10 days, he passed up. He died. And that was why David later married her. But we see that she was a wise woman. So comparing her story with the one of the Shunammite woman, the Shunammite woman knew that, okay, this is my husband. My husband, um, he, he would, he, he's aligned. Um, he would... He would do he would do what we ought to do but abigail knew that my husband no no he's not like that he, he he's not wise so the, she she still told him what she did it was the time difference it was the wisdom she applied so we should learn from the story of the shunamite woman that yes we should be we should be discerning we should have discerning spirits because the spirit of discernment will help you to take that which belongs to you and that also we should be virtuous in our homes in in, in our community in everything that we do that we should respect the authority over us the, we should respect the, the the man over us if you're married and respect god over you as a lady i pray that with these words they would grow in you they will establish you 
and they will cause you to have breakthrough even in this month of our breakthrough so we meet next week on a moment with god remain blessed remain safe i pray for you that the lord of all peace will visit you and that the the, the gates of heaven will be open unto you and unto your family that you will know no lack in the name of jesus that the lord will guide you in everything you do that you will know what to do at every particular time and the lord will help us to be discerning in everything in jesus name have a lovely day and have a lovely week ahead so we meet next week on a moment with god remain blessed Remain faithful and God bless.